Hello and welcome to lecture 4 of Motion in a Plane in Phys 1104. Up till this point in the course we've written down a whole lot of physical laws that are relating vector quantities to each other, so they're what we would call vector equations, but because we've been working in one dimension the vector character of them has been somewhat suppressed. Now it's time to look at how we rewrite them and work with them in two dimensions. So we already know lots of examples of physical laws and definitions that are vector equations. We have definitions like the definition of velocity and acceleration and relative velocity, and laws like the conservation of momentum, or the equation of motion, which is in fact just a different way of writing conservation of momentum. But we also have laws that are not vector equations. For example, conservation of energy is not a vector equation. But notice that work is defined in terms of an x component of velocity being integrated with respect to an x component of position. And so these are components of vectors. And this tells you that even though work is a scalar, we must be able to obtain it from the vectors. In two dimensions, we can take any vector equation and write it as a pair of scalar equations. So I'll use conservation of momentum as one example, but it works basically the same way for any vector equation. And let's think about a collision with some external force so that there's some impulse. And we can rewrite it this way, where I've just expanded out all those delta p's. And now we're going to split all of those vectors into components, except I will warn you before I do so that this results in an intimidatingly large equation. The whole point here is that we do not want to deal with an equation that looks like this. It's extremely cumbersome. So what do we do? Well, we're going to use something that I'm sure you've heard many times, but seems to have nothing to do with vectors, and that's that you can't add apples and oranges. Well, sort of. I've got these two boxes, and clearly I can say that my three apples and two oranges in one box, plus my two apples and four oranges in the other, come out to five apples and six oranges. What we mean by you can't add apples and oranges is that I can't simplify that down any further. But that was a very inefficient way of writing it. I might as well, since I couldn't simplify it down, have treated it as two separate equations, one for the apples and one for the oranges. And then I don't really need to write the apples and oranges into the equation, I could just label the two equations. Well, our i hat and j hat vectors work just like apples and oranges. We can't simplify any further than having our vectors written in terms of components times i hat and j hat. And so we can do exactly the same thing. We can take our great big ugly equation and we can take out the i hat parts and we don't need the i hats because we know there's an i hat on every single one of those terms. And so we can say that this equation is the x component of our conservation of momentum equation. And similarly, I can now take out all the y components and write them as another equation. And so now instead of one very large, very cumbersome equation, I have two somewhat smaller, less cumbersome equations. And the point here is that our x and y components of, our, of all our vectors add and subtract independently of each other. And so we should treat them independently. We might as well pull them out into separate equations. So let's work an example to see some of these ideas. Here's a concrete block being thrown into a cart on wheels. And before it hits the cart, it's going at 6 meters per second at a 30 degree angle from the vertical, like so. And after it's landed in the cart, the two are moving to the right together. So this is a totally inelastic collision. And as with most collisions, the force situation is too complicated to analyze. However, I've drawn these free body diagrams because they're going to be helpful to us in a moment. So we would like to use conservation of momentum, which in vectorial form looks like this. And in particular, we would love it if the system's momentum was conserved. In other words, if j was zero. But is it? Well, clearly it isn't. The momentum before the collision is angled down like so, and the momentum after the collision is straight to the right. And so this is not an isolated system. However, look at the forces and consider the external forces. That's everything except the forces that the cart and the block exert on each other. 
we have these two gravitational forces and we have the force due to the floor on the cart and because the cart is on wheels we don't expect much friction and so that force should be roughly vertical. That means that all of our external forces are vertical and so when we split this up into x and y components since all the external forces are vertical, we expect the x component of the impulse to be zero. And so even though the system isn't isolated, it is isolated in its x component. We can see that the momentum can be conserved independently in the x and y components. Well, so that gives us a way forward. We can write our conservation of momentum. like so, where note that this, because we know the card is going straight to the right, this is just Vf. And so we're virtually done. We can find what we want just by solving this. The only remaining thing to do is that this VBIx is the x component of the initial velocity of the cart. Well, we can get that off of this triangle because here it is. And if this is vi here, this 6 meters per second, then we can see, since the x component of this velocity is the opposite from the 30 degree angle, this component is just vi sine 30 degrees. And I happen to know that sine 30 degrees is a half. If you don't know that, that's fine. Your calculator does. But knowing these things can save you time. And so we now know everything we need. And so we can plug this all in. And so the final velocity of the two objects together is just 0.75 i hat meters per second. Before I move on, let me just talk about this sort of situation where we have a collision in an isolated and closed system. And so momentum is conserved and the energy is conserved, where if that looks a little big, just note those are the final and initial kinetic energy and internal energies for the system. And those V squareds in the conservation of energy would expand out in terms of the components. And so note that the conservation of energy does not separate into two independent equations because it's not a vector equation. And so there are no I hats and J hats that make it separate out. Well, now think about the common sort of situation where we know the initial velocities and perhaps the change in internal energy, and we might want the final velocities. But count the unknowns. If we don't know the final velocities, that's actually four numbers that we don't know because it's two components for each of those two velocities. And so we have four unknowns, but only three equations. And so in two dimensions, we can't solve this unless we have some more information, something like the final speed of one of the particles or the angle that it's going at after the collision or something like that. Let's move on from momentum and look at another set of equations that we can rewrite as components. And a particularly simple situation is projectile motion. So in lecture one of this unit, I defined a projectile as an object on which the gravitational force is the only force acting. And so if gravity is the only force acting on an object, we know that its acceleration will just be the acceleration due to gravity. And that's constant. And so the motion of such, such an object is uniformly accelerated motion. But this is now two-dimensional uniformly accelerated motion. And because it's uniformly accelerated motion, it's relatively simple. And it is relatively simple for as long as this thing is a projectile. In other words, from just after launch until just before impact. So before I move on into projectile motion, I want to make sure that you understand some key points. So if you're doing this on Moodle, you'll be asked these on Moodle. Otherwise, you should just write down what you think the answer is. Two questions. What are the components, AX and AY, of the acceleration of the projectile, where I've defined the axes on the diagram? And two, if we define impact as what we mean by final, then what is the final velocity of the projectile? 